Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here in the auditorium of Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you, members and visitors alike. May the Lord bless you. We're glad you're here with us for this morning worship hour. And to you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping to now we're coming up. We can be an inspiration to every one of you. I want you to take your Bible today and turn with you, please, to 1 Chronicles chapter 4. 1 Chronicles chapter 4. Turn there for the reading of God's Word today. And I'll give you the page number in the original Schofield Reference Bible. It's page 460. Page 460 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. Now, if you're not getting our daily broadcast, you tune into the station where you're now listening, and you get the daily broadcast Monday through Saturday, each day at 12 o'clock noon. So you tune in and get the daily broadcast if you're not getting it. If you'd like to have a list of our cassette tape, Write in and request a list. I'll send you at least a list of 240 of my sermons I preached here on Sunday morning on cassette tape. Now the tape today will be tape number 246. And I'm speaking on the subject, the man that asked God. And so just write in and say, Preach Edward, send me the tape on the man that asked God or tape number 246. We have 240 of these listed here, and you can get them at your request. Now, you pray for us and write to me. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603 is the zip code number. Now, in 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Chronicles, rather, uh, chapter 4, we have these words beginning with verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 9, page 460. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, that thine hand might be with me, that thou wouldest give me, keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. The Bible also tells us in the book of James chapter 5 and verse 16, that the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And so we see a man here in the Old Testament that asked God and he received what he asked for. As a man walking down the street one day asking questions, he had a little pad in his hand and every man he came to, he'd ask him some questions. And he came to this big uh, feller, much larger than he, and he asked him a, a, a question and he said, uh, well, what do you want to know? He said, I want to know your name and address. He said, why do you want to know my name? He said, I'm going to whip every man that I ask who his name is today. And the big man said, buddy, you're not going to whip me. He said, well, if you feel that way about it, I'll just take your name off the list. And so he was going along asking people's names. Now, when a, a little child comes to his mother and dad and says, Daddy, I want something, or Mother, I want something. They may not get everything they ask for, but many times they get what they're asked for if it's available. And the same thing should apply in the family of God. You're God's dear child, been born into God's family by the Spirit of God and Word of God. And God is your Father, and you lose out on many great things by not, by not coming and asking your Father for them about them. I want to mention just a few men and how they prayed in days gone by before I get into the main body of my message today. 
George Whitfield, a famous English evangelist, said, O oh Lord, give me souls or take my soul. He was so burdened for lost people, he said, I can't live unless I'm winning people to God. Henry Martin, a great missionary, cried as he knelt on Ender's coral stands. He said, here, let me burn out for God. And that he did. David Brannan, a missionary to the North American Indians from 1718 to 1747, declared, Lord, to thee I dedicate myself. O oh, accept of me, be thine forever. Lord, I desire nothing else. I desire nothing more. He wanted to be God's forever, to be used of God. Dwight L. Moody implored, Use me then, my Savior, for whatever purpose and whatever way thou mayest require. Here is my poor heart and empty vessel. Fill it with thy grace. That was a cry of Dwight L. Moody. He robbed hell of over a million souls. Martin Luther, the great reformer, prayed on the night preceding his appearance before the Diet of Worms, Do thou, my God, stand by me against all the world's wisdom and re reason. Oh, do it, thou must do it. Stand by me, thou true eternal God. And then pray and hide the man that actually prayed himself to death and prayed down revival in India. Pray and hide a missionary in India pleaded, Father, give me these souls or I die. Those men were greatly burdened to get people to God, to be used of God, and they wanted to be used of God or not live any longer on the earth. Now we have much said in the Bible about Abraham. We have much said about Moses. There's a lot in the Bible said about the Apostle Paul, but all that is said about Jabez is comprised in two verses. He is introduced here unexpectedly. If you read this text I gave to you, it just kind of jumps out at you. This man comes upon the scene unexpectedly. The prayer of Jabez is most remarkable. It's the model prayer of the Old Testament. And for fullness and brevity, it cannot be surpassed. Read it and reread it again. The Bible said he was more honorable than his brethren. Now, he did not try to be like them. He was different from them. And his mother bore him in suffering. In verse 9, his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. His name should be Jabez. The man of prayer may not be much account in this world, in the eyes of this world, but he's honorable in the sight of God. It is said that old Bloody Mary that killed out so many Protestants in her day, she said, I fear the prayers of John Knox more than the whole army of England. John Knox is a prayer warrior there in Scotland. Bloody Mary that killed out God's people. There she said, I fear his prayers. I hate to see this man on his knees. A man on his knees like Pray and Hyde, like John Knox, like these others I've mentioned today, causes the devil to tremble in his boots. When a man gets on his knees that can lay hold on God, get in touch with God, can make the devil tremble. You better believe that. And there's not a true born again believer in the world today, but what couldn't do that if they really wanted to do that? God would like for you to ask him. There are several things here in these couple of verses about Jabez I want to pass on to you. Number one, he called upon God. Do you know any greater person to call on than God? He called upon God in verse 10. And Jabez called upon the God of Israel. Now calling upon God implies something. It implies it implies faith. You wouldn't be calling upon God if you didn't really believe in God. Now this implies faith when you call upon Him. It lets God know you believe in Him. It lets others know you believe in the God of heaven when you call upon the Lord. Not only does it imply salvation and faith, but it implies sonship and fatherhood. When you get on your knees and say, Oh my Father, 
That implies fatherhood. That implies sonhood. You are God's son. He's your father. Now there's a crazy theory in the land today that's promoted and preached and taught by the infidels and the modest and liberals. And that is the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of all men. That's a lie of the devil. Nobody can rightly call God his father unless he's been saved by the precious blood of the lamb. Now men are gods by creation. But you have no right to say my father in heaven unless you're saved individual. Because God in heaven is not your father. Jesus said on one occasion, talked to the Pharisees and hypocrites. He said, ye of your father the devil and the lust of your father you'll do. And so in order for God to be your father and you to call upon God and for him to be your father and uh, to know that you, you're his son, then you must be saved according to the Bible. So this implies sonship and fatherhood. John G. Payton, as a little boy, and he became a great missionary, but as a little boy, he would slip up to his father's door at his father's study where his father was praying, and his father didn't know it, but little John Payton would come and kneel down at that door to listen to his father pray. That stirred his heart to hear his father pray. His, he didn't, his father didn't know it. But little John knew about what time his father prayed. And he would tip in, kneel down at the door, put his little ear there at the crack of the door. Just to hear his father talk to God. I wonder how many of our children today would be willing to do that. Do we have that much influence over them in that respect? That they just love to hear us talk to God I'm afraid that's few and far between like that today. So he called upon God, number one. Secondly, he started his prayer with an O, an interjection here. He said in verse 10, O oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. This man, Jabez, said, O oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. He's on his face before God. He's in agony of soul. He said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. This implies soul agony. An explanation, if you please. An explanation word. You, oh, oh, he said, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. He meant business. He was laying hold on heaven. He had a connection. He called on God. The line was connected up. There was fire on the line. And he was in soul agony. And he began to talk to his father. Now in order to lay hold on God, you must sometimes get into soul agony. Really get out of the business of talking to God. I'm not talking about this little I lay me down to sleep prayer. I'm talking about soul agony. Where you agonize with God in prayer to really come to your rescue and do something for you. There may have never been a time in your life when you have come to real soul agony and called on your Father in heaven. There's never a child of God that really comes to God in soul agony and says, Oh, God, and mean business, but what God doesn't listen to what he has to say. Abraham cried out to God. Abraham said, Oh, that Ishmael likely might live before thee. When Abraham found out that he couldn't straighten his house out without disposing of Ishmael and Hagar, Ishmael was his son, and he was precious to his dad. But he had to take him out of the wilderness and send him away because Sarah and Isaac said they can't live in the same tent with us. Abraham stood out before God, and he said, Oh, God, I want Ishmael to live before thee. And he laid hold on God, and God said, Abraham, I'm going to make Ishmael a great nation also. Because he cried from his heart and soul and said, Oh God, that Israel might live before thee. In David's great distress, he said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. For then would I fly away and be at rest. David stood there at that cave and old Saul after him like a hound dog after a rabbit. David had to hide and, and he was in misery and living in a cave and they were seeking his life and David saw a beautiful little dove which the type of the Holy Spirit fly by. 
And David cried out from the bottom of his heart. He said, oh, thou had wings like a dove. Then I'd fly away and I'd be at rest. He was tired and weary and had heartaches and problems. And he said, if I could just fly like that little dove and get out of this mess, then he said, I could rest and be at ease. Jesus in John chapter 17 used the same word, oh, uh, twice in his prayer. In John chapter 17, Jesus said twice in his prayer, he said, oh, when he prayed uh, for his father's glory, oh, that I would just have the same glory with me. And when he prayed for the world, he prayed for uh, glory there, and he prayed for the world, of course. He used the little word, oh. He used oh twice in his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. In Matthew chapter 26, verses 39 through 42, Jesus there facing Calvary, facing the bitter cup that he was to drink. And he looked toward heaven and no doubt tears running down his cheeks as the Bible tells us in Hebrews. He said, oh, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass to me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Once again, realizing he must drink the bitter dregs of sin on Calvary, he cried to God again, his Father, there on his knees, uh, their blood uh, may be running down his cheeks. His sweat as it were, great drops of blood. Tears mingled with his blood. He cried again. He said, Oh, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Twice to use the little word, Oh, in that prayer, like Jabez did in the Old Testament. Paul in Romans chapter 7, when Paul realized he tried to live for God, he tried to live holy and pure. He wanted to be a righteous man, a great man for God. He wanted to be a humble man for God. But every time he tried to be used of God, the devil showed up and he had problems in the flesh. And he cried out and he used the word, oh, in Romans 7. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? Now Paul knew he was having a struggle. When he first got saved, everything seemed to be wonderful. But as he began to serve God and move on for God, he discovered that he had the old Adamic nature still there giving him problems, and he wrestled with him. Every morning, Paul got up and cried out, Oh, Lord, let me die out to myself today. Help me subdue, oh, Paul. Help me to wrestle the old man down. Help me to overcome the old man. Oh, God, who shall deliver me this from this wretched body? God, help me. And he cried out to God in agony. Oh, pray and hide yonder in the India that prayed down a revival and actually prayed so much and so long and so often until his heart began to move uh, from his left side toward his right side. He literally prayed himself to death, but he prayed down revival in India among those heathen. And when he had to come back home, he went by England, and Chapman was over there in a revival. And Chapman heard that Pray and Hyde was on the way back to America to die. He had prayed himself to death. And Chapman said, Oh, if I could get Hyde in this meeting, seem like I can't get anybody saved, seem like there's no spirit here. I'm bucking against the devil. If I could only get Hyde to come and pray for us, maybe we could have a meeting. Hyde appeared on the scene one night there when Chapman was there, and he went to the prayer room. And Chapman said, Hyde, we need God in this place. We want you to pray for us. We believe that you can get a hold of God. They all knelt in prayer, and they knelt there for several minutes, and nobody said a word, not a word. They began to groan in the spirit. They could feel the very presence of God. And then all of a sudden, old Pray and Hyde said, Oh, God. And when he said, Oh, God, the Spirit of God came down, such holy hush, and they could feel the very presence of Jesus Christ there in that prayer room. And the Holy Spirit took over, and they all began to weep. And he said again, Oh, God. And the Spirit of God wrapped them up, and there they wept. And the presence of God is so real. When Chapman got up to speak that night, the power of God took over. When he gave the invitation, multitudes came forward and got saved. All because pray and hide said, oh God. And God heard him and heard the groan of his heart. And, 
and the sincerity of his heart and mind, and God came and joined them, and they had a revival. I wonder how many can say, Oh God, oh Heavenly Father, I want you to help me three times, three times. Hyde said, Oh God, oh Father, oh Heavenly Father, and there God was real. Number three, Jabez asked for blessings in verse 10. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. How many of you have asked God for blessings? God wants you to. God wants you to ask for blessings. You ought to pray for blessings. Ask God to bless you and bless your household. Maybe that's why you're not getting the blessing of God. You don't ask him. In Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 20, the Bible says, A faithful man shall abound with blessings. And if you are faithful and love God, you can have these blessings. In Genesis chapter 32 and verse 26, the Bible says, He said, Let me go for the day breaking. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Oh, Jacob and Jaboth, and I've been there in one of our Holy Land tours that stood by the brook of Jaboth. And that's why Jacob wrestled with God. All night long, Jacob said, God, I want you to bless me. The angel said, I can't. I can't bless you. And, and Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. The angel said, let me go, Jacob. It'll soon be daylight. i got to go back to heaven. Jacob said, no, you can't go. I want a blessing. You've got to bless me. I'll never turn you loose until you bless me. That angel said, all right, Jacob. It's about daylight, and i got to get back to heaven. I'm going to bless you, but I'm going to cripple you at the same time. And there he touched the hull of Jacob's thigh and crippled the old man. But he got the blessing. He had to hop away from Jabok. But he had the power of God and the blessing of God upon him. Many times when you pray for blessings, God may have to touch you some way or another. But you can get the blessing. That he did. When Isaac blessed Jacob, he said, the, You smell like the, like the smell of a field. The Lord has blessed thee. When Isaac here blessed Jacob and there the blessings came upon him, he said to him, said, you smell like a field that the Lord is blessed. You smell to me like you've been in the very presence of God. I'm going to put the blessings upon you, Jacob. Now we are blessed in the heavenly places in Christ. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Oh, we, we automatically receive the blessing. But we got to get to the place where we can accept it. Everybody can accept some of these blessings from God because they're not where God can bless them. There was a preacher yonder in South Carolina. Many of you know him. I think he resides in Florida now. And his name was Odell Good. Some of you have heard Odell preach, I'm sure. Odell was an emotional kind of a fellow. He loved God. And uh, when he was a little boy, he tells a story of how he's growing up, he and his two brothers. They'd go out and play until about the middle of the afternoon. And then they'd go in and ask Mother for some bread. And he said Mother would go to the cupboard and she'd pull out this big old cat head biscuit. She'd rip that thing down the middle, fill it full of good butter, give us a butter and biscuit. And we'd go out in the yard and play. But he said, I tarried behind. And then when I went out in the yard, I had some jelly in my biscuit. My two brothers said to me, said, Odell, how in the world did you get jelly in your biscuit? Said, we went in, and all we got was a biscuit and some butter, but said, you got some jelly. Odell said, I asked Mofford. He said, I asked Mofford. That's the words he used. And he asked Mofford, and when he asked Mofford, Ma put the jelly in there with the butter. The reason his two brothers didn't get the jelly, they didn't ask for it. The Bible said you have not because you ask not. And the reason many of you can't get your problems straightened out and get the job done, you haven't asked God to help you. God wants to help you. You go on and get the thing all tangled up, messed up, and then God may let you get out the best way you can. There's a man who got a job in a weed shop one time. The superintendent said, now listen, if any of these threads or anything happen to this loom, then you call the loom fixer. Don't you try to straighten it out. But this fellow thought he had all the answers, like a lot of people today. He got all the answers even before he asked the question. And something happened to his loon. He's going to straighten it out. And he started messing with those threads. He got them in the biggest mess. And when the loon fixer came around, it took him hours to straighten it out. The superintendent came by and said, I told you if something happened to call the loom fixer and leave those threads alone. He said, well, I thought I could fix them. He said, yes, I knew you couldn't. Now, beloved, listen to me. 
Many times we get ourselves in a mess and a turmoil and a confusion because we think we can straighten out all the things that go wrong and we won't get along before God and ask God to straighten them out. God can straighten things out that we can't touch. God knows how to do it. That man didn't know how to straighten those threads out. Had he listened to the superintendent, the loom fish could have had him back on the loom in about a minute. Now, if you'll ask God to help you straighten out some of your problems, he can do it. But you have ignored God. God said, just go ahead and dance around in your own little mud hole. I'll just let you get good and muddy and help yourself. You're not asking me to help you, and I'm not going to help you. I'll just let you get out the best way you can. Now, you need to ask God to help you. Jabez said, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. And God helped him. And old David Brannon, you know, uh, at the age of 29, he died in the home of Jonathan Edwards. Jonathan Edwards was a great preacher. David Brannon was a missionary to the Indians. And old Jonathan Edwards said, you know, I was so greatly honored to have old Brannon in my home for the last few days of his life. Said just to hear him pray and hear him talk to God. He said, I wouldn't have missed it for anything in the world. That man, the last few days on earth, you never heard such talking to God, such praying as that man did. He said, I just could not have missed that for anything. He meant so much to my home in his dying hours. Number four, he asked God to enlarge his coast. We have too many people just fiddle around satisfied with what little they can do. They create all kind of excuses and create little gods and hindrances and and they don't ask God to expand or enlarge their coast. Verse 10, he said, and enlarge my coast. We should never, never be satisfied with what we're doing for God. Self-satisfaction is dangerous. Become at ease in Zion. Keep praying that God will help you more and more to be a greater and greater blessing and to do more for him. He said, enlarge my coast. God will give us more opportunities to be used of him if we really desire them. In Matthew chapter 25, verses 28 through 29, he tells about the talents. Some used their talent, and there were added other talents. One man failed to use his, and he buried his talent, and he lost everything. Now, if you have a talent of two or three, don't stop there. Say, God, there's something else I can do. I can give out tracts. I can pray more. I can witness more. I can read my Bible. I can be more faithful. I can sing. I can play. I can do whatever you want me to do. I can teach. God will help you and give you more talent if you really want it. Now, if you don't want it, God's not going to push it on you. You rest assured of that. Now, we need our mouths, our feet, and our hearts to be enlarged according to Jabez. In Psalm chapter 8, 18, verse 36, the Bible says, Thou hast enlarged my steps unto me that my feet did not slip. You know, God can enlarge your steps, uh, your steps so you won't slide down. God can make your feet bigger, as it were, so you won't stumble and fall. We find in the first Samuel chapter 2 and verse 1, And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiced in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. Here Hannah prayed, and God enlarged her request. God gave her a son. In Psalms 119, verse 32, David said, I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Do you want God to enlarge your heart, enlarge your feet, enlarge your hands, your witnessing, and so forth? God can do it. He can do it to the glory of God, uh, spiritually speaking, and he wants to do it. Number five, he asked that God's hand might be with him. Now, we are pitiful without the hand of God. If we don't have the hand of God, if we don't have the presence of God, we are wasting time. We're like a dog trotting through dry leaves. Beloved, we must have the Spirit of God, the presence of God, if we expect to be a blessing. In verse 10, and that thy hand might be with me. Jabez said, God, I want your hand to be with me. We want God's hand to be with us. God's hand can and will be with us if we are permitted. The church of Antioch had the hand of God with them. If you read Acts chapter 11 and verse 21, the Bible said the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Why? They had the hand of God with them. 
It's a sad day when God says, I'm going to withdraw my hand from that church. I'm going to withdraw my hand from that individual. If God's hand is with us, we can have the blessing of God. You may say, preacher, what will keep the hand of God from being with us? Sin. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2. God says, I'll not hear. It doesn't matter whose hand's against us if God is for us. If we have God's hand with us, it doesn't matter what the devil's outfit thinks about us. It doesn't matter what they say about us, what they accuse us of. If we have God's hand with us, let the heathen rage. When the hand of God's with David, Saul could not harm him. Saul was of the tribe of Benjamin, whose men could sling stones at a hair breath, but he could not pin David to the wall with a javelin. See, God's hand is with him. Saul should have been able to take that javelin and drive it through David because he knew how to use a slingshot. But no, no, God's hand was with David. We need to realize that. Nehemiah and Paul, Nehemiah and Paul had God's hand with them and their men when the enemy was against them. Nehemiah had God's hand with him. The enemy said, you can't do it. He said, we can do it by the help of God. And they did do it by the help of God. Number six, he asked that God might keep him from evil. Verse 10, that thou wouldest keep me from evil. Do you ever pray that prayer? That's a good prayer to pray. That thou mightest keep me from evil. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 13, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's a good prayer. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, watch and pray that you are not in temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. How many of us pray that prayer? God, keep us from evil. And then number seven, he prayed that he might not be grieved by evil. Verse 10, that it may not grieve me. Grief is a terrible thing. You become grieved over many different things. And when you become grieved over evil, then that hurts deeply. You can become so grieved over your mistakes and sins and shortcomings that you just want to give up and quit. That's exactly what the devil wants. When you become so grieved over problems, misunderstandings, shortcomings, and you just say, Lord, uh, uh, I, I'm just going to quit. The devil said, that's, that's what I want. That's exactly what I want. Well, I, I won that round. I, I got that one. I'll take off after another one. See, the devil wants you to give up. The devil wants you to quit. The devil wants you to be careless and negligent. The devil wants you to be unfaithful in serving God. The devil wants you to do that. And he knocks people out one at a time in that respect. And then number eight, God granted what he requested. Verse 10. And God granted him that which he requested. That's the secret. That's the answer. God granted him that which he requested. In James chapter 4 and verse 2, you have not because you ask not. That's it. You have not because you ask not. You want some jelly in your biscuit with your butter? Ask not. That's what this preacher did. Ask for it. You want God's blessings and more talent, more ability and Things to come your way to the glory of God. Ask God. Ask God for it. Ask the Lord. He wants to do it for you. Now he asks not amiss that he might consume it on his own lust. But he asks the glory of God. In Luke chapter 11. We have three men. I have a man rather coming to ask for three loaves of bread. That's an interesting story. Luke chapter 11. He had some company come in and. He didn't have any bread to put before him. And he knew his neighbor lived up the road there, had bread in his cupboard. And he goes to his neighbor's house and he knocks on the door. And the neighbor came to the door and said, what do you want, sir? He said, I have some company down at my house. Some company just came in and I need three loaves of bread to take care of them. His neighbor said, man, don't you know better to come up here and bother me? I'm in the bed of my children. Leave me alone. And go on and let, let me alone. But did he go? No, sir. He knocked the second time. The man said, fellow, what do you want? He said, I told you I'd come up here to get three loaves of bread. The man said, didn't I tell you I was in the bed with my children? You ought to let me alone. But he didn't. The man kept on knocking. He said, man, what in the world 
was wrong. He said, I come up here, I want three loaves of bread. Now, he didn't say, I want one. He didn't say, I want two. He didn't say, I want four. He did not say, I want uh, what you can spare. He said to his neighbor, I need three loaves of bread. I want three loaves of bread. You know what his neighbor finally said? He said, that idiot will never leave until he gets three loaves of bread. And he goes to the cupboard. He pulls out not one loaf. Not four loaves, not two loaves. He brought three loaves of bread and gave it to that man. And he went down and fed his friends. He knew what he wanted. He knew what he went after. And he knew how to get it. Now, when you come to a place where you know what you want from God, you know what to do about it, you know how to get it, God is ready to give it to you when God sees you're not going to shut up until he gives you three loaves. A lot of people, just before God goes to come and gets the three loaves, they faint and fall by the wayside. And the Bible said you'll reap if you faint not. And if you stayed on God's doorstep a little longer, you'd have got them three loaves. But you didn't do it. This man wouldn't leave. He wouldn't take no for an answer. And Jesus said, now when you pray, you ought to pray in that manner. And this man, because of the importunity, received the three loaves of bread. And he got the answer. And went on his way. All right, you can have it. You can have it, but you got to get it like I told you here this morning. And you can get it if you want it bad enough. Anything you want bad enough and go after it hard enough and strong enough to, with determination, you can pretty well get it. Now, God wants you to do that in his direction. Let's stand our feet. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you take the message and use it. God, when I ask you what you want me to preach on this morning, this is what you want me to preach on. And I brought what you want me to preach. Now, Lord, somebody in the radio listening audience needed this message. Somebody in this auditorium needed this message. Now, Father, use it. Use it, Father. Thank you for Jabez of old and take no for an answer. And he received the blessing. May your people receive it likewise in Christ's name. Amen. Debbie's going to play for us on the instrument as she plays. If you're here this morning and you need to come forward for salvation, read education, or join the church for any reason, the Spirit of God prompts you to come, come on down here. You know whether or not God has spoken to you. You know whether or not you need to come forward. You know that better than anyone. You know, would you come while we wait? Come on right now. Right now while we're waiting. some young couples back there visiting with us we're glad to have them always glad to have fine young couples to come and visit and others as well we welcome all our visitors you be sure you give them a good north side baptist handshake before they leave and invite them back and i believe they'll come back so you do that